Um, so we are in section um, 3.3 today. And we're going to talk about how we prove lines are parallel. So let me draw a picture here <coughs> that's like the picture that's on our graphic organizer. <coughs> so there are two lines. And there's our third line. We call this line M on the graphic organizer and line N. All right, and these both have two arrows. So uh, let's see, let, I'm going to undo those because I'm going to say we don't know that those two lines are parallel yet. So I'm undoing those arrows. And this is line L. Um, <coughs> What did we call what did we call line L? What kind of line is that? Trans transversal. So line L is our transversal. What did we call the parts, the space in between the two lines? The interior. And outside the two lines is the exterior. And I'm going to label, this is all on your diagram, so you don't have to redraw it. <coughs> all right, so this is what our this is what our graphic organizer looks like. And we want to know if if we know, what, what do we have to know that would tell us that these two lines are parallel? And basically the, bo the bottom line is, if we know the things that we, that we talked about before that happen when the lines are parallel, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. So in the box on the upper left hand side it says using corresponding angles. <coughs> So, in the upper left it says corresponding angles, using corresponding angles. So if we know that corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. We're going to say if... corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And remember the two bars, this symbol means that our lines are parallel. So on our diagram, which angles are corresponding angles? Let's remember which ones are corresponding angles. Which one corresponds to angle <coughs> 1? That's a vertical angle. So we said for corresponding angles, one is on the inside and one is on the outside, and they're in the same place on the transversal. So one and five. Angle one and five. Angle two is corresponding to which angle? Two and six. If those are congruent, let's look at a few others. We got we have some more. Uh, angle four. Which angle <coughs> corresponds to angle 4? Angle 8. And angle 3 corresponds to angle 7. So if any of those pairs of angles are congruent in this situation, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. So that's how we can prove that the lines are parallel, is if we know that any of those pairs are congruent, then our, then our lines are going to be parallel. So that's one way that we can show that, in, that lines are, are parallel. On the upper right side, it says using consecutive interior angles, or same side interior. I'm going to write same side.
So when the lines are parallel, what did we say happened with same side interior angles? For example, angle two and five. When the lines are parallel, what do we know about those angles? They're supplementary. So if we can show that same side interior angles are supplementary, that guarantees us that the lines <coughs> are parallel. So I'm going to say if same side <coughs> interior angles are supplementary the lines are parallel and so let's write down our same side interior angles here so angle to an angle, I already mentioned this one, which side, which angle is the same side interior with angle two? Angle five, and angle three, and which angle? Eight. So if two and five add up to 180 degrees, angle two and five, we know that the lines are parallel. If three and eight add up to 180 degrees, we know <coughs> that the lines are parallel. So that's another way that we can prove that our lines are parallel. So let's go down to the bottom, bottom left. Alternate interior angles. Now when the lines are parallel, what do we know about alternate interior angles? It's on your other, other graphic organizer. <coughs> so let's, um, let me lift this. Angle three and four, alternate inter angles. What do we figure out about angle three and four? They're congruent. So when the lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent. So if we know that they're congruent, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. So if alternate <coughs> angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And on our diagram, alternate interior angles. Interior means between the two parallel lines, and alternate means opposite sides of the transversal. So which one would be an alternate interior angle for angle two? and angle 8. <coughs> and then how about angle 3? And angle 5. So if angle 2 and 8 are congruent, then we know that the lines are parallel. Angle 3 and 5 are congruent, then we know that the lines are parallel. And then finally, uh, alternate exterior angles on the bottom right. When, uh, when, we, when we know that the lines are parallel, what did we say we know about alternate exterior angles? Should we look at our opener again? <coughs> alternate exterior angles outside the parallel lines, opposite side of the transversal, so one and six. There's one and six, 57 and five. The one and six are congruent. 
55, angle 5 is congruent to angle 50, uh, the 57 degree angle. So alternate exterior angles are congruent. So if we can show that alternate exterior angles are congruent, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. So we're going to say if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And on our diagram, let's look at our alternate exterior angles. So exterior means outside the parallel lines, outside the two lines. Alternate means opposite sides of the transversal. So angle one and which angle would be alternate exterior with angle one? Angle seven. And then angle four. And which angle is alternate exterior with angle four? Angle six. So if angle one and seven are congruent, <coughs> we know the lines are parallel. Angle <coughs> four and six are congruent, we know the lines are parallel. Now in the book, the re if we use these as reasons, or so it will say how do you know the lines are parallel, the book says the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem. I'm not going to ask you to say converse, com all of that stuff. If you just tell me alternate interior angles, that's fine. If you tell me alternate exterior angles, that's fine. The book says the converse of the alternate exterior angle theorem, the converse of the same side interior angle postulate. Um, all you, all I ask you guys to say is same side interior, alternate exterior, corresponding. <coughs> so that's all you have to tell me. But just be aware that the book says this converse of, of ver these various theorems. All right. So let's look at a couple of examples. And then uh, I think we might do one, one proof today. So we have four different ways that we can show that lines are parallel. Let's go back here really quickly. Corresponding angles. If we know the corresponding angles are congruent, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. If same side interior angles <coughs> are supplementary, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. Alternate interior angles, congruent, lines parallel. Alternate exterior angles, congruent, lines are parallel. All right, so I'm going to draw a picture here. And we're going to have a couple of lines here. <coughs> and I'm going to ask which lines are parallel. And let's label the lines. I'm going to call this line A, and this line B, and this line M, and this line N. And I'm going to say this is angle 2 and angle 3. Which lines are parallel if angle 2 is congruent to angle 3? <coughs> so if angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent, which lines would we be able to figure out are parallel? Angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent, which lines would we be able to figure out are parallel? Any ideas? So let me highlight these. Here's angle 2. And here's angle three. Which uh, which <coughs> pair of lines are angle two and three between? Okay. Angle so which which pair of lines? So angle two and three are which are between which two lines? 
They're between M and N. So they're interior angles for M and N. And they're on the opposite sides of angle A. So we can think of angle A for these two as the transversal. <coughs> and they are on the interior of these two lines. So what kind of angles are these? What would we call these angles? They're alternate interior angles <coughs> between line M and N. So alternate interior angles are congruent. So which two lines does that tell us are parallel? Then? Which ones are they between? M and N. So M is parallel to N. And we would say because they are alternate, interior angles. So these two alternate interior angles are congruent. They're between their interior on the interior of M and N. They're on opposite sides of line A. So they're alternate interior angles and that guarantees us that line M and line N are parallel. So this is how we would use, <coughs> use what we learned today to figure out something about parallel lines. Questions on that example? Okay, let's look at another one. Let's say we have this and this. <coughs> and this is x plus 5 degrees. And this is 2x plus 3 degrees. And this one we're saying what value of x makes the lines parallel. <coughs> so what needs to be true about these two angles for the lines to be parallel? They have to be supplementary. So when we add them together, we have to get 180. So I'm going to say the lines are parallel if x plus 5 plus 2x plus 3 equals 180 degrees. <coughs> because these are same side interior angles. If same side interior angles are supplementary, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. Now we can solve this for x. So I'm going to combine like terms. So I get 3x plus 8 equals 180. I subtract 8, so 3x equals 172. Divide by 3, and this tells me that in order for these lines to be parallel, <coughs> x has to equal 57.33. If x equals 57.33, then these two add up to 180 degrees, and that guarantees us that our lines are parallel. So this is how we're going to use this information. We need to figure out what guarantees us that our lines are parallel. So if the lines are parallel, we know certain things happen. And if we can figure out that certain things are true, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. All right. <coughs> so let, let, I want to go through quickly, I'm going to go through a proof of one of these, one of these uh, theorems about parallel lines. Okay, so we, uh, let me draw a picture here. So there's my picture. And I'm going to call this um, angle one, angle two, and I'm going to call that angle so we're given 
that angle one is congruent to angle two. We want to prove that I'm going to call this L1 and this <coughs> L2. Prove that line one is parallel to line two. So all we're given is that these two are these two are congruent, and we want to prove this theorem that if alternate interior angles are congruent, then our lines are parallel. So what we're going to do here, when we're proving that lines are parallel, we're going to go back to our postulate. Our postulate about parallel lines was that same side interior angles were supplementary. So if we can show that same side interior angles are supplementary, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel because we said that was our postulate. That was the part that we accepted as true <coughs> without proof. So I'm going to set up my proof here, my statements. and my reason. So our goal here is to show that 1 and 4 are supplementary. And 1 and 4 being supplementary, that was our postulate about parallel lines. So I'm going to say angle 1 congruent to angle 2, and my reason here is given. And now I'm going to say that measure of angle 2 plus a measure of angle 4 equals 180 degrees. What would be my reason for saying that? <coughs> they're a straight line and we, they're supplementary and we call two, two angles that make a straight line what kind of, it's a linear pair. So they're a linear pair. Well now I'm going to say here is an angle 1 and here's angle 2. Um, if two angles are congruent, that's the same as saying the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. Congruence, equal measures mean the same thing. Measure of angle 1 equals a measure of angle 2. Well, here's a measure of angle 2. So I'm going to put in and say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180. So what did I do with the measure of angle 1 there? Substitution. <coughs> and now I have that uh, angle 1 and angle 4 are supplementary. If they add up to 180, they're supplementary. That's the definition of supplementary. And now I can say that because these <coughs> two are parallel, or these two are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So line 1 <coughs> parallel line 2. And I'm going to say Same side interior angles. So same side interior angles, that was our postulate about parallel lines. If same side interior angles were supplementary, that guarantees <coughs> us that the lines are parallel. Alright, questions on that? We can go through all, we would go, go through and prove all of the theorems um, that we just talked about using the same, the same argument. Basically we're going to go use, use the information that we have to eventually show that the same side interior angles are supplementary and that was our postulate about parallel lines. All right. So now we know all about how we prove that lines are parallel. Really the same, it's saying that we know the same things as we know about the angles when the lines are parallel. 